Hi, I'm Darren Walker. Tonight on Inside Louisiana Baseball, I sit down with head coach Tony Robichaux to discuss the upcoming week in Raging Cajuns baseball. Later, we get to know junior outfielder Todd Lott and introduce you to one of the most supportive fan groups in the country, the Cajun Cooking Club. But first, Coach Robichaux joins me to discuss the weekend series with Coastal Carolina. You're watching Inside Louisiana Baseball. Welcome to Inside Louisiana Baseball. Darren Walker joined, as always, by the head coach, Tony Robichaux. Coach, uh, take two out of three this weekend from Coastal Carolina at their place. I, I know you really wanted to get that last one, but two out of three isn't too bad. No, I mean, um, you know, you get greedy in this mm -hmm. business. Um, sweeping is not easy. Um, but when you get the first two, um, then you kick yourself on the way out, not getting that third one. But... Uh, you got to come so sometimes come back to try to stay focused on what did you really accomplish, you know, winning two out of three there. But because of our overall record, because the hole we dug for ourselves, that third game is important, right? Mm -hmm. when, in all grand scheme of things, if you're going two out of three, two out of three, two out of three every weekend, heck, you had it for being close to being a champion. The trouble is, is when you've gotten swept a couple times, trying to get that sweep, even means even more so but you also can't let it tail spin the hitters and the pitchers and what they did in the two games that we won um you took a charter flight out there um and i'm sure you're grateful for that uh, yes. but it didn't come without a couple of issues here and there you had some uh, luggage issues but uh, a couple guys really stepped up this weekend for you our equipment manager carrie connor and uh, chico rodriguez drove 13 hours to get uh, a lot of your bags and equipment over to uh, to the game, so I, I know you wanted to thank those two guys. Yeah, they old schooled it, you know. I mean, <laughs> that's old school right there. And uh, but but to to catch them at such short notice, you know, and 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 we were trying to find some other younger kids to do it, maybe equipment managers or whatever. But the biggest problem we had was finals started mm -hmm. Monday, and a lot of those kids needed the time to study. So he was actually uh, Carrie was headed to a wedding on Saturday in in, in Mississippi, I believe, and. Mm -hmm. So he was, at first, didn't know if he could even do it. And uh, I mean, we had 29 bags that needed to get to us. And um, so he uh, rented a van and, you know, picked us up at the airport. Chico, I think, had like five minutes to decide if he could go or not. Carrie had, I think, maybe an hour and a half. So uh, they got together and said, oh, it's old school, this, because, you know, Chico comes from being an equipment manager, mm -hmm. too. And, you know, all that I think even drifts further back to Lynn Williams' attitude. Um, that's how Lynn was. Whatever needed to be done, Lynn was going to get it done. And I think those guys being trained under Lynn is what made them both jump in that van and come. Uh, so, what did you guys do in the meantime, not having all of your equipment? Well, believe it or not, we we weren't able to practice, so it gave them really some rest time. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes. Rest is good too. Um, so, so you know, they were able to have the night off, which most of the time we only go practice for about an hour anyway because it's so late and long in the season. But um, you know, they just they just went a bunch of them went to I think Dave and Buster's and and got supper. And there was a Chicago uh, Cubs affiliate mm -hmm. next to the hotel. So a couple of us went to see a minor league game, and um, while while I was there, I, I went with Coach Freeman, and we were behind home plate just watching the game. And we looked over in the third base dugout and saw Chase Lambin, and uh, one of our former players, and he's the hitting coach for one of the Ranger teams, and it was the Rangers that were in playing the the Cubs. And then we looked a little bit more into the dugout, and we saw Turtle Thomas, and really? you know the former <laughs> coach at LSU and FIU. So after the game was over, Chase got us and cut through the clubhouse to go say hello to Chase and the coaching staff and, and to see Turtle and say hello to Turtle. So everybody kind of went do what they wanted to do, but I, 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 I just believe that the little bit of rest mm -hmm. accidentally came at a good time. Right, so we get to game one. Jack Burke gets the call on Friday night. He was your fifth Friday night starter in the last eight weeks, uh, but he was just phenomenal on that night. Six innings of shutout baseball, seven strikeouts, no walks, and only five hits. Well, you know, again, it's the walk situation, right? I mean, when the walks come down, the score comes down. His last outing, we lost three to two, mm -hmm. but we were in the game. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, what's given us a lot of trouble is we kind of let games spin out of control on us. And so, so he did a great job, and uh, that just goes to show you why we've been so inconsistent all year. We've never been able to get uh, everybody onto the field at the right time and then get them on the field consistently. Um, we finally got him up. He wasn't able to throw early in the year, trying to work on arm angles and stuff that he made adjustments on because of his injuries. And then we finally got him up and running, you know, an inning here, two innings here, three innings here, a starter. And then finally got him up to Friday. And, and when Jack's fastball's turning down, He's good, mm -hmm. and for the last couple of outings, it's been turning down really good, not sideways, mm -hmm. and because of that, I think that's what's led to his success. So when his pitch count gets up, he comes out of the game, Austin Perrin comes in, and he was phenomenal as well. He gives you three scoreless with six strikeouts. Well, again, you know, I'm sure he has his heart on starting. Everybody wants to be a starting pitcher, and he can start and has started for us and has right. done good. Mm -hmm. But where I really like him with a staff that has enough depth is where I got him right now. I mm -hmm. think that's where his value is. He's a strike thrower. If he comes in the game and we're winning, they have to swing their way back in, and that's so hard to do off a guy that has a good changeup. Man, I hate when we get behind on teams that have good changeups because that is so hard. You want to take your way back into a game, right? Because when do we get bad? We get bad when hitters stop swinging. That's what our pitchers do. And when they stop swinging, believe it or not, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. You don't get hurt when they're swinging. And what I like about Perrin coming in behind him when we got the lead is that they've got to swing their way back into the game, mm -hmm. and that's hard to do off his quality changeup. Uh, meanwhile, at the plate, you guys really got things going in the second half of the game, uh, and you wind up winning the game by a score of 10 and nothing. In game two, uh, Brandon Young gets to start, runs into a little bit of trouble early, but Jacob Schultz comes in and does exactly what you needed him to do, and he gives you five good innings. Uh, really shutting the door on, on Coastal that day? Well, because of our inconsistencies, you know, and Gunner not being able to be Gunner, and it's not Gunner's fault. It's just without it, it, it starts kind of a backlash, a domino effect. And then we were starting to, to get guys out of roles. I like Perrin where he's at. I, I, I love Schultz as a middle relief guy. He's not really a closer. Mm -hmm. He can, but he, he's a middle relief. But, but our, our closer blew his arm out in the third game of the season. So when you add up all that stuff and losing – eight arms to pro ball in two years, it forced us to pull guys kind of out of roles. The only thing that was going to cover that up early in the season was hitting, and we just didn't hit early. Mm -hmm. But now the hitting system's in. They understand it. Uh, they've internalized it now. They don't have to think about it. And so because of that, that's why we're scoring runs. Mm -hmm. Now we, we still – a, a little short depth wise because we just with Bradford's arm out and with Gunner out we still a little short when it comes to Sunday but Friday and Saturday now we got guys in the roles that they need to be in we just need somebody to step up for us on Sundays now. So Schultz's effort allowed the offense to really make a comeback and you guys go ahead and take that one nine to seven unfortunately on Sunday a completely different story um, you guys dropped the game 11 to nine 10 free passes, uh, nine walks, one hit batter, and uh, it's hard to beat anybody when you're doing that. No, I know. I know you have a son, and you and him went out in the yard and practiced pitching and everything, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't think y'all went out there and practiced throwing balls, right? right? So that's the difference maker is is our issues either lack of experience, which is what happens. If you look at the Red Sox, right, they started out really slow. Everybody started to wonder what, what's going on. You know, I mean, their manager, they, he was voted, I think, Major League Manager of the mm -hmm. Year last year. What do you do, get dumb over six months? <laughs> and so, but if you look at the starters ERA, 4.6 something. Mm -hmm. If you look at the Red Sox bullpen, 4.75. And then now they've turned it around, won like, I don't know, last 18 out of 24. Look at the ERA, starters down to 2.50 bullpen down to two point something. It, it's all predicated on ERA and, and the bottom line is our ERA is not good. Our bullpen gave up eight runs out of the bullpen. Well, the, the hitters continue to score, but we couldn't stop anybody. Mm -hmm. And then it makes the hitters work irrelevant. And that's why Coastal's where they're at. They're struggling a little bit too. Why? Their pitching staff is up and down. They've got good hitters, but but Sometimes pitchers will suck the life out of hitters. 
It's a crazy dynamic because at the beginning of the year, it's the other way around. The other way around. No <laughs> Isn't doubt. that crazy? Well, that's, that's the key to us. If you'd have started with a lot of veteran pitching staff but we just weren't hitting, well, you wouldn't have nothing to worry about, right? But we needed the hitting to cover up what we knew was going to happen. We lost eight guys to pro ball in two years. And if Gunner couldn't be Gunner, man, now you got to eat up some innings. Mm -hmm. And so we knew that. Well, we started out a little slow. Then we got hit by the position player injuries. That was the, that was the one thing we couldn't get hit by. That's where all our age was, right? Mm -hmm. All over the diamond is our age. We got no age in pitching besides Gunner. Mm -hmm. So because of that, we needed some things to line up. And the markers just didn't line up. We were putting in a new hitting system. That took some time. You always got to back up before you move forward. And then we couldn't have any injuries out of veterans. And then bam, man, Wyndham goes down, Bourgeois goes down, Castles goes down for a while with a broken nose. Jack Burke can't come up and start. Gunner's not able to start. That's all age. Toro goes out hitting 308. That's a junior college guy that's age. Bradford blows his arm out third game three. That's age. We lost all the this age and then we turn towards all these young freshmen to come on mm -hmm. put your big boy pants on and it takes a while for that to happen with experience it just does just like at a rookie at the, in the big leagues it takes them a while to get going so so we had to get through all of that but it's made us where we're at we got an ugly record but but who cares mm -hmm. we got six left and what we got to try to do is just get into the tournament and it doesn't matter if it's ugly we just we just got to get in there, and we're picking some people back. Look at Danny. You know, everybody keeps asking, boy, what's the big deal in Danny? He's healthy. Mm -hmm. Guy had a torn labrum. I don't know if you've ever tried to throw a ball or, you know, with a torn labrum. It's not fun. And so we had to put him at first base to take the throwing down off of him. Then he ended up with a bad hand. Well, try to hit with a bad hand. So that took him some time. Then he had a high ankle sprain. And so the labrum's never going to get fixed. But, but he can play through that. But the hand and the high ankle sprain, you need that to heal up. And it finally healed up. But it's healing up at a good time. So we, we've got to just keep plowing forward these last six. Speaking of those last six, we'll have Coach Robo show back later on in the show to talk about the rest of the way. But coming up next on Inside Louisiana Baseball, we'll get to visit with one of the hottest bats in the lineup, junior right fielder Todd Lott. Look at me in the eye. They bleed just like you bleed. There is no apprehension. There is no fear. Bottom line, they gotta come to us to get this done. All right, we decide what happens. We dictate what happens on that field today. Together on three. One, two, three, together. together. University of Louisiana at Lafayette, our Raging Cajun spirit goes beyond athletics. Welcome back. Time now to meet the junior outfielder from Jacksonville, Florida, Todd Lott. Hi, I'm Todd Lott. I'm a junior outfielder for York, Louisiana Raging Cajuns. I started playing baseball when I was about three years old. I played basketball, football, and baseball growing up, but in high school I just played basketball and baseball. In high school, more like my freshman, sophomore year, basketball was more my priority, and then junior, senior year was more baseball. I knew baseball was going to be my sport, and Maybe like my junior year, I was 17, 16, 17 years old, and it just, it came easier than anything else. So I just stuck with it. And my dad always knew that it was my sport because he played baseball, so he knew it was a better 
better avenue to go down for baseball. I feel like even if he didn't play the sport, it would have been pressure because he was always up me by just being being great and not and always finishing stuff. So he just it was it was good because he knew what he was doing and he knew what it would take for me to get where I wanted to. So it was just it always was helpful. I chose this school because of Co Coach Robichaud. He was just a great a great man. He preached us wanting to be great men. So it was always more than baseball when I chose the school. I talked to Georgia Southern a little bit, uh, Florida Gulf Coast, a couple of conversations with Florida, Florida State, but that was about it. I feel like the fan great. The fan base is great because even we struggled this year and we still at the beginning of the year was top ten in attendance. So that means they they care for us and they always want to see us succeed. We can go to Omaha. We can go to Omaha this year if people if we believe we can we can do it. We got a lot of people that believe on the team. We got a coach that stays behind us through anything. They haven't gave up on us yet, and we just got all the pieces that I feel like can go. Coming up next, get ready to eat. The Cajun Cooking Club on the other side of the break. To perform, you need speed, skill, strength. With every muscle, every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes, you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it, then your feet will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. They bleed just like you bleed. There is no apprehension. There is no fear. Bottom line, they got to come to us to get this done. All right, we decide what happens. We dictate what happens on that field today. Together on three. One, two, three, together. together. At the University of Louisiana at Lafayette, our raging Cajun spirit goes beyond athletics. Welcome back. Time now to introduce you to one of the most supportive fan groups in the country, the Cajun Cooking Club. Hey, I'm Jessica Allen here at Rousseau Park for a home baseball game, and today we're going to get to know the Raging Cajun Cooking Club. Tell me a little bit about the Raging Cajun Cooking Club. We started the cooking club about 25 years ago as a group cooking under one of the oak trees. Uh, Dennis Broussard and Steve Squires were the main people that started it. And I've been in it pretty much from the beginning. We've got four or five of us that have been here for 20, 20 plus years. This is about 1994. Uh, we all got together, so that's 25 years. And uh, I've watched my kids grow up out here. I see my kids' kids now out here. So it's been out here for a while. And why do you think this organization has supported the UL baseball program for so long? Well, it's just we, we become part of the family of baseball. Uh, we get to know the players. Uh, we cook for their Christmas parties uh, with, and go out for the golf tournament in the fall. So it goes beyond game day what we do with them. And we all like UL baseball and have been supporters for a long time. We've got 60 plus members in the club and we feed them every meal, every game. And the guys are great. I mean, we get to we get to meet them, meet their parents, the coaches, and see a different side that everybody in the stands doesn't get to see. My name is Marla Trojo. I'm from Lafayette. Been coming to the games since I was in college, 1989-90. And why have you chosen to be a part of this association? 
it's just it's a family atmosphere everybody brings their kids um, we cook on the pit everybody just has a great time and being a part of this organization how has it impacted you oh my god it's brought me I mean, so many new friends that I probably would have never met I'm, one of my best friends that I've been friends with for 25 years we met in the stands at one of the baseball games when we were in college so it's it's been a lot of fun we probably have close to 200 members everybody pays dues all that money goes towards feeding the team um, you're welcome to bring in food and cook on the pit during the game we have soft drinks beer all for a minimal price and um, everybody just shares everything and we have a good time. We are fortunate that we do have a club within the UL Foundation so we are a nonprofit and we have a lot of members that join and that membership fee goes to help us feed the team. We also feed the visiting team every Friday night for free because we know how difficult it is for them to go and try to find food late at night. So we've kind of become uh, known across the Sun Belt as well as other um, universities that are not in the Sun Belt. They know about the Cajun Cooking Club and they look forward to eating with us on Friday nights. <laughs> We make sure we do a variety of meals. So today it's going to be spaghetti. Last night it was uh, chicken and chicken and sausage and gravy and rice and gravy. And then we do other things when it's on a weeknight like hamburgers or uh, what we call wraparounds. And that is just a piece of bread with a piece of sausage and they can make their own kind of sausage po' boy. When we got here there was an oak tree where the, the stadium is right now. And so we saw the oak tree, that we saw the bricks come up around the field, then they built the concrete patio here. Then we got a building, then we got a shed. So and now we've got a stadium to go with it. So it's like, it, we feel good. They gave us a part of the new stadium. They left our area alone for right now so that we can continue to be a, a part of the atmosphere at Cajun Field. As far as for the growth of the program, it has changed so much. I mean, you can tell from the stadium and just the fans. I mean, when we started coming and doing the cooking club, there was maybe 300 people here total. Everybody, half of the people wouldn't even come inside. They'd pull their truck up to the fence and and watch it from there because they could drink beer on the outside but then they started selling beer on the inside and it just grew from there. Well, I think the Rage of Cajun baseball team is something of a pride within the university. Tony Robichaud has done a great job of building this program, and all of us here have become more of like a family. We love coming to the games. We love supporting our team. It is something that we take so much excitement in doing, and so we want to make sure that they know how much we appreciate them and all the work that they put in to making this team great, and that's how we show our support. Next on Inside Louisiana Baseball, we look at the week ahead with head coach Tony Robichaud. The Learfield IMG College Directors Cup, the highly recognized mark of distinction in college athletics across all divisions, both men's and women's sports. Follow your favorite team's pursuit for excellence in this prestigious annual award through the directorscup.com, USA Today, or L Directors Cup on Twitter. Learfield IMG College Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics since 1993. Integrity! Together! This! This! F! F! Tough! Integrity! This! This! F! F! Tough! Integrity! Together! 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 This! This! F! F! Tough! Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Baseball. Darren Walker joined once again by the head coach, Tony Robichaud. Coach, the final home series of the weekend this week. Georgia State comes to town. There'll be a test. Uh, also a bunch of things going on around the series with graduation on Friday. 
uh, Senior Day on Saturday, and then of course Mother's Day on Sunday, and you'll be honoring some of those seniors, McKinnon, Vayon, Castles, LaHare, Cox, Monica, Bourgeois, and Leger. Well, you want to send the seniors out the right way, and, it, and only not only in their last home game, but also in this season. They don't want to be known as the seniors that didn't make their conference tournament or didn't get to a regional. So we want to try to get those guys out the right way. And yes, we got a lot going on. You got a team coming in that their record might not be good, but but we we got to be good. Number two, you got finals to throw in there too. Mm -hmm. Players in finals this week. So we tried to bust up the three days. So the Friday we'll do graduation, leaving it just to that. Saturday we'll knock out the senior walk, and then Sunday we'll let the mothers throw the first pitch. And we have bad weather coming in the weekend too so <laughs> so there you have it um let's talk about hunter gaddis real quick for georgia state one of the best pitchers uh, not only in the conference but uh, one of the best major league prospects this year um he's going to probably go friday night for the panthers he struck out nine texas state bobcats the other night in seven and a third so you can have your hands full there well the big thing we always preach when you face we we, we always refer to these guys as buffaloes and there's only one way to take a buffalo down you know it takes four five six wolves to be able to take a buffalo down and so you can't take him on one on one and so how you do that is you got to match him on the other side if he matches up with burke that night burke's got to keep the score down mm -hmm. because he's probably going to keep the score down and then you got to do the little things throughout the game play good defense move runners and get runners in when you have a chance because a lot of these buffaloes they're stingy they don't give up many runs so you have to be stingy on the other side also gotcha we may have ourselves quite a pitching uh, duo on the mound on friday night coming up next on inside louisiana baseball a more detailed look at the upcoming schedule Intact, together, together, this, this, F, F, Intact, together, Truly there is something for everyone here, from moving image arts, to nursing, to petroleum engineering, to education, to uh, voice, to photography, to political science, to anthropology, to sociology. I just, I can't list the almost hundreds of opportunities that students have to find the perfect fit and the major that best represents what they would love to do. We have alternate certification programs, master's programs, doctoral programs, in addition to hybrid and online classes. So a student can definitely find his or her passion um, as far as what they want to do. Not only are we going to find the major that is the best fit for our students, but we're going to make sure they graduate. We have one of the highest graduation rates in the state, and among our student athletes, in fact, we have the highest in the Sun Belt Conference. Knowing that UL Lafayette has one of the top graduation rates in this state makes me feel much more secure in my decision to come here, and it makes me feel very excited and confident for my time after I leave campus. We have everything here to be able to make sure uh, that the students have the support they need as they go through the process. From a writing center that'll look over papers and prove freedom for you, uh, to free tutoring services that students can walk in on demand and say, physics is not my thing, um, can you please give me a little bit of help? Uh, we have prep classes for the GRE, we have prep classes for the LSAT. Uh, we look at medical school and pre-med and law school and business school. We have MBA programs. We have many, many PhD programs um, so that students can uh, further their education as they progress. Thanks again for joining us this week. Time now to look at the details of the upcoming schedule. 